Fifth Lava TV in the Silly Farm tutorial section in the video corner. I hope that you're doing great. Excuse the bags under my eyes. We've been pulling long nights here at Lava TV and Silly Farm getting ready for you. I am leaving tomorrow, headed to Rome and headed to um, Uster, Usterhut uh, to visit all my great Dutch friends in Holland and say hello to everybody. Uh, then when I come back, I'm heading to L.A. and I am doing a big super jam and two classes in L.A. in Torrance. So if for more information, just give me an email at heather at sillyfarm.com. Uh, then after that, I will be in New York City. Hey, guys, I am coming back. I haven't seen you guys in a little while. So I will be there uh, September 6th doing a Super Jam in Jersey with the New Jersey Guild. And then I will be at the New York City, Cl New York City Clown Alley. I miss you guys. So let's get started. Um, there is a million ways to get to the finish line, and how you get there is up to you. But i just like to show you guys some things on how to uh, make things faster for you using your arty cakes and using some different tools. So um, for you people who still are on the fence about Faba TV, maybe this will help you. Next month in August, if you subscribe for a year, you will get a free custom only exclusive to Faba TV people, Wonder Palette, for free. So I'm going to show you guys how to use some of them because I really love these combinations. And then we're going to do some designs. So what I'm going to start off with is using my sponge. I'm just going to dampen it up. And then I'm going to take out this beautiful pink and purple combination. And I'm just going to load my sponge. sponge just like this, I'm going to rub it over the surface. And I don't want it to be super wet. I actually want it to be more on the dry side. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have her close her eyes and I'm going to head up. A lot of people ask me about the angles and what I'm going to do is uh, show you guys. So you want to start off pretty much with your sponge pretty straight. I'm talking about like a 90 degree angle and just give it a very, very, very tad of a turn. So I guess that's like another kind of angle. So anyways, I'm just going to actually press it on her face just like this and I'm just going to start bringing it out. And the reason that you stipple it versus, um, versus you actually just dragging it, when you drag it, you're going to get those streaks. When you're loading the paint, what you're doing is you're soaking it up. In order, in order to get the paint back out of it, you want to just press it, and that also helps it blend automatically. So now I have a really pretty blend. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take another sponge, and I'm going to load it with another color. So I'm going to load it again uh, right in the middle of this one, just like this, right over it. And you could use your brush too. The reason that I'm using a sponge is because I want some really bold color. So then what I'm going to do is I want to make sure that my, that my pinks are overlapping. So I'm just going to, and even though it's a different pink, so I'm going to start off again in the corner, and I'm just coming down just like that right on the corner of it. So I went up and I went down. down. So I'm going to re repeat the same thing on the other side. But notice, okay, so if I did the same thing on this side, what would happen? Because the pink is first, then I'm going to have pink as my first color. But since I started with purple, I want purple to start. So I naturally, I can't just load my sponge like that. What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to use a different sponge and you're going to have to load it so that you can so now I'm going to load my sponge, load this one, just like this, just like I did the last one. So now I have the purple in the right place. So then I'm going to do the same thing, that same angle. So I'm just going to press my colors and bring it up, just like that. And then because I want the pink again, and again, if I just went and put my sponge just like it was on that side, then I'm not going to have the right color combination. So you need to make sure that you have opposites on either side. And because I want the pink first, I'm going to load it like this so that when I put my sponge there, it's right. So I'm just loading it like this. So now I have my colors there, and I'm going to do the same thing I did on that side on this side. So I'm just bringing it down, just like this. So okay, now I have now I started off by having putting down the base color. So the next thing that I'm going to do is actually just pick up a little bit of this silver. And instead of going and cleaning my sponge, I'm just going to pick up a little bit of silver right there on the tip of my sponge. 
you want to make sure that your sponge is still a little damp or else you're not going to be picking up much color. And then right in the middle of her eyes, I'm just going to brush on a little bit of this silver right in here. So just like that, so that I could bring the whole thing together. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is use these so cool badass stencils. And Lynn just showed you them in her last uh, video that she just did. It was the one that I just put up called the um, Badass Face Magic. And they come on a ring like this so you can buy the whole set or you can just buy the ones that you want. And what makes them so cool is that they're, they can be used with your airbrush, they can be used with a sponge, and they just come in this whole multitude of designs which makes it for me really cool because I'm somebody who loves to add dots, who loves to add textures. So this makes it really cool. So I'm looking for the one that I want to use. And it's this one that's kind of like these. I don't want to call them paisley, but they almost look like henna designs. And I really like them because they're really good as a centerpiece for this design. So I'm going to load my sponge with a little bit of white, just like that, just on the tip of it. And you want it to be less wet because if it's more wet, then it's just going to leak. So then I'm going to take this beautiful flower piece and I'm going to put it right in the middle of her forehead just like that and then I'm just going to sponge right over it so that serves as my first one right inside of there so then I'm gonna put one on I'm gonna turn her a little bit this way and I'm gonna put one right here on this side and what I do on one side I'm gonna do on the other side it's like algebra like our producer said. What you do on one side, you're going to do on the other side. And then I'm just going to quickly take the one that has most of the dots on it. As you can tell, I've been using this one. And I'm just going to go over this area right in there. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to go right over it. So then what I do on one side, I'm going to do on the other side. So when the colors start fading a little bit, that means I'm just going to pick up a little bit more white right inside of there. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side just to match it up, just like that. And then a little bit on the bridge of her nose right here, just so that I can bring all this whole design together. So now I have this mixture of the this design, this pattern, and then of this pattern. So then the cool thing about it is that because there's these little pieces, I can go in and I can just add little ones right inside of there to just keep this pattern going. Because ultimately what I'm going to do is go back in with my white and I'm going to design around this anyways. Good. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little bit more to the outline of these by just kind of pressing my brush and flicking so that I can make them a little bit more defined. It helps that they're already there and that's why I use the stencil because it makes the shape for me. If I would have had to sit out and draw the whole thing, it would have took me a lot longer. So no, that's the word. So I'm just going to bring my teardrops right into there. I'm gonna curl down there and I'm gonna do the same thing because what I do on one side, I wanna do on the other side. Even though I'm going to kind of go on top of it, I'm still going to bring that same teardrop effect right inside of there. So I'm going to load my brush again, and I'm going to turn her a little bit this way to do the same thing. I'm going to turn her, okay, sorry about that. So I'm going to just make these little flicks on the edges of those designs anyways, and make my little dots right in the middle. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did on one side, I'm going to do on the other side. So I'm going to start off by making, what did I do on that side? I'm going to start off by making my teardrops, 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 right inside of there. And I'm going to bring it down and curl it just like I did there. And then the same thing on this side, I'm going to bring it up. And I'm going to teardrop off of it. Just like that. Even though that one's a little bit higher, that's okay too. We're going to bring this whole design together. So what I did on that side, I'm also going to do on this side. So I'm just going to the edges of this petal. And I'm just extending them so that I'm extending the shape. 
and then I'm going to create my tear my swirls right from there here I'm going to try to repeat it right in here so building off of this one I made a swirl like I did there and then I'm going to swirl it out there and bring these in so very gently what am I doing adding my teardrops right inside its way and I'm going to repeat the same thing coming off of that one I'm going to swirl inside of there bring it around swirl if you want to you can connect it with your little and bring my teardrops right inside of there that way if you look at this design before we go to outline the entire thing everything is flowing right into the middle of it so now what I'm going to do is I know that this color, this is in that cool wonder palette, but I know this color looks brown. It's not. It's like a beautiful kind of wine color. So I'm going to mix it with a little bit of the metallic purple because then I'm going to get this like metallic deep berry wine that I'm looking for in order to outline this design. So I switched over to using a number three brush, which is a little bit thinner, or maybe I never switched over. I don't know. I'm a little tired today. So I'm going to start off by just outlining this entire thing. So I'm starting off out over here because I'm closest to this side by just outlining this entire thing. And I'm going to go bolder on the edges and thinner as I come in. So I'm just adding a little bit of dots and definition inside of there. And notice when I'm outlining, I like to use the tip of my brush. That allows me the control that I'm looking for in order to get thinner and thicker lines because you can press harder when you're looking for a thicker line. So I outline that and I'm just going to keep on with that same technique. So I'm going to start here. So just turn a little bit this way. So I head up here. And I'm going to go all the way around it just like that. Same thing here. Going to load it a little bit more. Now I'm just again moving around the face just like this. I'm going to do some teardrops in the middle because there's some spaces left open before I start outlining that particular design. So now I start off here and I'm trying to go thin and thick between these so I don't actually lose the design but I like to embellish it using this color. And I'm going to just outline the same thing that I did on the, that other side. Lining a few more dots right inside of there. Using the tip of my brush I'm going to just put in these teardrops right in there too. And now I'm going to work around the face here. Again, keeping my lines very thin. I'm going to add a little bit of this glitter right in the middle, right here. And I'm not going to cover my design, reason being is you want it to shine through. I'm just adding a little bit of color on her and then I'm going to add just a little bit of another color right in the middle, right in here and lighten it up right inside of there. And then I'm going to have her just smile at the camera and say, thank you for joining us, guys. Thank you for joining us, guys. I know, she's too old to be like my little puppet, but just stand there for a second. Oh, she's beautiful.